How do you do Fallon's? Yep. What are you looking for? Tingling. Tingling. Primarily, what fingers do you want to see tingling in if it's a true carpal tunnel? Yep, these. Do it again. Okay. These three. Prayers. Just like, like they're praying. Again, you're going to have them hold this position for 30 seconds to 60 seconds. You know, if you start to, let's say they do it for five seconds and they're like, oh, my fingers are going numb. You don't have to keep going. You know, you're just trying to elicit that, that type of reaction. Tenels. Remember, tenels, you're going to tap. And tenels, if the nerve's already hypersensible because there is an entrapment, you can use tenels. This would be the area for carpal tunnel. If you suspect like a, an ulnar nerve entrapment, you could do it right there. If you suspect entrapment of, you know, let's say C5 at the IVF, you can tap there. Normally you should, use the pointy end, but normally you should be able to tap with either the reflex hammer or your finger, and, it, and it's not gonna cause tingling down that, that, that nerve or that nerve root. You know, that would be what you, you know, a negative binding. If let's say I tap C5 and they get zaps of pain all the way down to these fingers, that's a, an indication of a C5, C6 entrapment. If you do it around the carpal tunnel and it makes those fingers go numb, that's a positive tenels for carpal tunnel. If you suspect carpal tunnel, what, what special test would help to differentiate that, rule it in or rule it out? Oh, the, e, the, the, the electrical EEG. EMG, NCP. You. You know, that's going to see, A, if it's a true carpal tunnel. Because remember we talked about carpal tunnel is sometimes overdiagnosed. Anytime people have just tingling in these fingers, they're like, oh, you have carpal tunnel. Could be, remember, pronator teres, an entrapment of pronator teres. Because remember that median nerve comes through that pronator teres, then travels down the forearm. Or it could be an entrapment in the, in the cervical spine. EMG is just going to help to differentiate where the lesion is and how severe is the lesion. Remember also with a long-standing carpal tunnel, remember they're going to get scalloping of that PNR eminence sometimes. I think somebody had a patient in here that, that had that. Yeah, it was you. So then we're on to lateral epicondylitis or what sports elbow? Tennis. Good call, Doug. So Cozen's. Remember, hand down like this, you're going to have to push up in your hand. You're looking for pain on that, that lateral at the condyle. Mills, they're going to be up and you're going to try to push down. It's almost like that, you know, almost like a C6 uh, muscle flex there. So you're going to have to push down. And again, you're looking for pain in that area. I didn't put it on there because it doesn't have a name. Remember where you have them extend your fingers in your hand and you're just gently pushing down? Again, that's going to cause pain if there is uh, lateral epicondylitis. Really no special test for lateral epicondylitis. I mean, you could order an MRI. Usually it's going to be based on observation, patient complaints, and uh, positive orthopedic findings, like those tests. Then if you go in there and you dig on the lateral epicondyl and there's tenderness in that area, and the patient's like, yeah, that's where it hurts. That's usually positive enough. It can respond slow. It can be a 50-50 shot with, with, you know, its response rate. You know, sometimes, you know, if it doesn't respond, cortisone will help with the patient until you can kind of break up the inflammation in that area and help it to heal. The August Varus stress test is exactly as it is in the, in the elbow as it is in the knee. You're checking the medial collateral, lateral collateral, or the radial collateral, and the ulnar collateral ligaments. So you would just, you know, support the, the forearm, and you're either going to go, you know, lateral to medial, or medial to lateral, and you're going to see if there's any, any give or any, any pain in that area. Elbow flexion test. What are we looking at there? What structure? What's that? What nerve? Remember the yep, ulna. Remember the, the anatomy of that ulnar 
nerves. Remember, it's very superficial, and it can get trapped in that area pretty easily. Sometimes people, like, remember we talked about computer workers, they always have that elbow down this way and they're always rubbing that, that nerve or they're causing scar tissue sometimes around the nerve. They're thickening of that ligament of strutters in that area. So with the ulnar flexion test, you're just gonna have them, they could be sitting or standing, and just have them do this and hold that position and see if that causes pain. Usually into, now we're gonna talk about these two things. What else could the, the pinky and the ring finger? Yep. What else could cause tingling in these two fingers besides ulnar nerve entrapment? Cervical, yeah. Or like remember thoracic outlet. So the empty beer can test. What are we checking with the empty beer can? Empty beer can test. Good call. And supraspinatus is usually involved. How, what's the percentage? 80 to 90 percent of the time, it's going to be supraspinatus when we're talking about rotator cuff injury. So you're going to have the patient, you know, bring their arm and, and thumb down and hold it there like they're emptying out a beer or a soda. And you're going to tell them, don't let me push your, your arm down. And you're going to then actively try to push that arm down. You can either do it towards the front or off to the side. Again, they should be able to hold against your resistance. There should be no pain. There should be no giveaway. If there is, that's a positive test. You suspect supraspinatus is torn. What test, what special test would you order to further confirm that? Mm -hmm. All right, good call. Speeds test? <laughs> 